Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 14 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss mapping ASP.NET request data to controller action simple parameter types. Please watch part 13 before proceeding with this video. In part 13, we discussed using form collection object. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So here we have this create controller action method which responds to HTTP post operation. And this method has got this parameter form collection object. Now from part 13, it should be clear that form collection object will automatically receive the posted form data. Okay, so here we have this create view and we have some data here for name, gender, city and date of birth. Now when I click on this button create, you know, this data will be posted to the server and this form collection object is going to receive, you know, the values from that posted form. And look at what we are doing here. We are retrieving name, gender, city, date of birth from this form collection object, populating the respective properties of this employee object. This employee object is then handed over to the sad employee, which will save that employee to the database table. And finally, we are redirecting the user to the index action, which is going to list all the employees in the database table, TBL employee. Now, do I always have to use this form collection object or do I have another way of achieving the same? We can use parameters as well instead of using form collection object. For example, I can use, you know, string name, string gender, string city, date of birth is date time, so date time, date of birth. And now, Instead of using form collection here, I can use the parameters that are coming into this function. So name, um, gender, city, and date of birth. All right. And then the rest of the process is same. We are handing that employee object to add employee and then redirecting the user to the index action. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run this and see if it's going to work as expected. So let's fill the form with some data. So that's the create action, gender mail, city, and date of birth. Okay, now before we hit create button, Let's see how many rows do we have. We, at the moment, we have five rows in this database table. Now let's go ahead and click on this Create button. Look at that. All the columns are populated as expected. Now let's quickly check in the database table. So we have the sixth row there. Now, how is the data automatically you know, mapped to these parameter names? Now here, if you look at this Create view, we have you know several text boxes here. How did MVC map, you know, correctly name to name parameter, gender to gender, city to city, and date of birth to date of birth. You know, who has done this for me in MVC? That's the model binder. You know, it has automatically mapped the form data, the posted form data with the parameters here. So how did the model binder do that mappings automatically for us? That is with the help of, you know, the control names and the parameter names. They have to match. Now if you look at this create view form, if I right click on that and view page source, every control on this form has got a name. For example, there is a text box here which is capturing the name of the employee. There's a drop down list here which is capturing gender and then another text box to capture city. So all these text boxes and drop down lists on this form has got a name. So if you look at the name text box here, look at that, input type is equal to text, that's the text box. And look at the name value here, name is name. So the name of the text box is name. And if you look at gender here, you know, this is a select list, a drop down list is nothing but a select list. And look at the name of that select list, it's gender. And similarly, if you look at the city text box, look at that, name is city. So here, the names of these controls on the form matches with the names of these parameters. And that's how the model binder is able to map the control values with these parameters automatically. So we can either use form collection object or we can use these parameters. But the important thing to keep in mind is that these parameters names must match with the names of the controls on the form. Otherwise, model binding will not work as expected. Okay, so notice that this create action method has got parameter names that match with the names of the controls on the form. 
and obviously to see the names of the form controls simply right click on the web form and I mean on the form and then view the page source now do we need to do this mappings manually every time not really I mean look at this here if you look at this employee object it has got just four properties um, so I'm using four parameters there uh, so which is fine you know uh, but on the other hand let's say I have an object which has got like 20 or 25 properties or 20 or 25 controls and if I have to map all the data to a controller action method do I really need to have 20 to 25 parameters no there is another way of doing that in a later video session we'll see how to do that okay and another thing to keep in mind is that the order of these parameters is not you know it doesn't really matter you can have gender first name next and then date of birth and then city you know they can appear in any order as long as the names of these parameters match with the names of the form controls you know they are going to receive the posted data alright so the order doesn't matter what matters is the name alright on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day